As you know, Steve is the founder of OpenStreetMap, and um, he's going to be talking about that today, so I'll leave the rest to him. Awesome. Geotastic. <laughs> Map-tastic. So, hi, my name's Steve Coast, and I started something called OpenStreetMap uh, five years ago, which is a heretical idea designed to destroy Tally Atlas. And we are making a map of the world, and then we give that map of the world away for free, just like Wikipedia does. Um, now, Wikipedia, uh, Encyclopedia Britannica. Who's used it in the last three years? Nobody! Oh, a few dinosaurs, that's good. Um, Encyclopedia Britannica, as we all know, had a very broken business model. It wasn't broken at the time, but it became very broken because they employed armies of people to write articles in a top-down fashion, so-called experts. And that worked well for 100 years or so until Microsoft killed them and then uh, Wikipedia killed both of them. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, timing. Timing is everything. Um, Teleatlas do the same thing, right? They have exactly the same model. They pay people who are uh, quote-unquote authoritative because they wear jackets and have a degree and have expensive GPSs and stuff. And they drive around in vans all over the planet, or at least the expensive bits of the planet where it's worthwhile doing so, so that they can produce maps that you buy in your car or that are given away to you uh, with your phone, that kind of thing today. And it's exactly the same. And it's silly, and it's outdated, and it's going to go away. And that's my main message. A message perhaps from the future. Up. I'm going to go up. Like this. Yes. Now, who's used Wikipedia in the last three days? Yeah, Wikipedia. And there's a reason for that. It's because we let the great unwashed masses edit these articles, just like we should do with maps, right? Maps are fundamentally broken. When you let the great unwashed do that, mad people like that, it turns out that garbage in does not necessarily equal garbage out. We actually get very, very good articles out of this, which we give away for free and, you know, make the world a better place because of it. There we go. If you give people like this GPS units, if you give them aerial imagery, if you give them access to tools to make maps, and this is actually from our conference, they can do exactly the same thing and build absolutely wonderful, the best maps you've ever seen on the planet. Um, and that's what OpenStreetMap does. So, GPS devices, this is how OpenStreetMap started. People just walking around streets, trails, uh, biking, flying, anything you can think of. Um, and as they're going, recording metadata, what the name of the road is, where the pub is on which corner of the block, that kind of thing. When you aggregate all those GPS traces together, you get something that looks like that. That's a map of London of GPS traces uh, from several years ago in OpenStreetMap. OpenStreetMap's completed much of the UK now, it looks a lot better. Um, but you can see where people go. That very first, you know, at the beginning we, we do the CBD and then we go out as people map those places. Yahoo now gives us aerial imagery. Aerial imagery, you know, roughly equivalent to that kind of quality, like, except looking down. Um, you can draw buildings with that. You can draw trees. You can draw coastlines and all the other things that we couldn't collect with GPS traces. And then you end up with maps that look like this. Um, this is Boulder, and I gave this talk on Tuesday there. Uh, you can see that the map's brilliant. You've got footpaths, buildings, uh, park lots, parks, freeways. But of course, it's not just in Boulder, it's also in Berlin. Germany is our best mapped country. Um, it's basically complete, different depending on your definition of complete, um, right down to addressing in lots and lots of places. Um, Germany is also the number one uh, set of articles in Wikipedia. But of course, we're not just in nice, rich countries like America and Germany, we're also in Baghdad. OpenStreetMap is the best online available map of Baghdad that you will find anywhere. There are no other alternatives. Congratulations, OpenStreetMap. <laughs> that is also the case in Amsterdam. Uh, AND, the third largest map supplier behind Teleatlas and Navtech, gave us the entire Netherlands for free to import into OpenStreetMap several years ago. And we've been improving that data to the point where they don't recognize it anymore because our map data is that good. You can see the difference when we import Tiger data, free Census Bureau data, free as in public domain, and then we let people work on it. This is Lake Merritt in uh, San Francisco Bay Area, uh, in Oakland. You can see that we fix everything. Look, freeways, parks, stuff. And of course, disaster zones. Um, this idea is equally applicable anywhere in the world, and it's also the best way to uh, make maps where you've, you know, don't have any infrastructure whatsoever. This was Haiti, January 12th, 2010, as it says. Very little activity, probably some people used aerial imagery to draw in some streets. Maybe a few locals added a road here or there, that kind of thing. And then... <laughs> January 14th, 2010, so uh, kind of just after the earthquake. I think that was after, was it before? I don't know what it was. Who knows? Was it before still? It was just after. 
Um, so you can see the quality of the map has improved already. Uh, we had thousands of people around the world and locals uh, creating this map uh, of, of Port-au-Prince and the rest of Haiti uh, using OpenStreetMap as the base. Um, OpenStreetMap became and remains the default map of um, all of Haiti uh, because our map is the only one that's available. And it also happens to be far superior in quality to almost anything you'll find even on the mainland in America. And this should skip forward to an even better map shortly. That's what the map looks like pretty much today. Uh, you can see that you wow. know, only in a week or two, uh, it got incredibly detailed. Right down, these, these brown things are foot, uh, actually tracks, there's footpaths, buildings, um, absolutely everything imaginable, and a collaboration you know, both outside and in, uh, using the very feeble internet that was available. Uh, and because the data's open, you could get this on GPSs and stuff as well. And not just the stuff that we need to map here, but um, each one of those red dots represents either a building that blew up or a camp where people are living, that kind of thing. Um, and then this data was shared out amongst everybody. Uh, the first crowdsourcing map to do so. People have tried to do this previous disasters, things like Katrina, things like the tsunami, um, but could never quite get everyone to agree around a central map, an open street map, was the first time we've done this. Uh, the thought I want to leave you with is that this data was open and so on, so people could get it on GPSs, including survey teams. And there's great quotes from uh, survey teams out there on our wiki saying that OpenStreetMap saved lives because we were able to get the data to them in a way that they'd never had before at any previous disaster. So, uh, bring on more disasters for OpenStreetMap. <laughs>